I'll go back a little bit on this problem of the font menus getting longer and longer, and that's a real, a real problem. Um, we have kind of decided that we don't want to see the square boxes or the tofus as they have recently been um, labeled by my colleagues. Um, and yeah, if you got that spam in Chinese and it was square boxes, is that a better experience for you than the Chinese characters? Maybe. Um, but uh, our approach has been to um, limit the number of new fonts we add to the operating systems and to, uh, to Office, um, trying to put the fallback or last resort or UI fonts into um, single fonts that contain a number of languages. We have one font that covers the Indian languages, another font that covers the Southeast Asian, another one that covers the North American languages, the Cherokee and uh, Canadian, um, Canadian languages. Um, and that helps keep those font lists shorter. But it, it is a problem and something that we're, we continue to work on. Um, in terms of the question about what people come and ask us about, uh, typically, we're, we're as, uh, my team has a company-wide charter, and Microsoft is a very big company, and we get every imaginable question coming to us from feature teams and product groups. Uh, but it all pretty much comes down to solving typographic problems licensing, rendering, hinting, file size, subsetting, um, just, the, just the standard stuff that yeah, I think a lot of us in the room are used to. Um, but because we're a centralized team, we try and, try and provide answers that can scale and work. So we have, we have different applications and um, our platforms doing roughly the same thing. Um, we don't get a lot of questions from the feature teams about uh, optical scaling yet, or advanced open type features for Western languages. Um, well, but what we try to do is uh, educate not just our uh, users, but the internal teams by building showcase fonts, like um, the, the one that Matthew and Kevin talked about last, last A, A type by the Sitka font, where we have for the first time in our operating system at least added to optical sizes. Um, we also have a collection of uh, showcase fonts that we we gathered from around the, around the industry. Um, if we see something interesting, we'll ask for an internal license so that when a team comes to us, a gamers team comes to us asking for something, we can we can show them something that we consider to be a showcase. So it's a, a lot of education. But it sounds like. Um, as companies like Adobe and Google have moved on to these mega fonts, uh, you guys started that clearly by putting, uh, what were they called? Madonna and Georgia. <laughs> uh, sort of cross platform, and those sort of became uh, default web fonts as a result of that general extremely generous release that you did for the world. Um, are those days over? Yeah, I think, I actually think oh. the days, I think the days, of, I think the days of, sorry David, I think the days of system fonts are over. Um, I think that their, their time has passed. Um, the system fonts were like Madonna Georgia, Aerial Times, Korea New, um, were put onto the people's machines so that you could have documents that would have, you would get document fidelity, you could view a document on a different computer and have it lay out the same. I don't think people really care about that anymore. Um, professional uh, designers probably do, but we're looking at, we're reading documents and emails on small devices and where we don't want WYSIWYG, you want that content to be responsive. <laughs> so I think that the days of system comms are over um, and I think it's uh, pretty much thanks to I think high DPI displays and the web and the cloud that we um, we can have content in the font the designer wants and not the font that we we Microsoft Apple and Adobe feel should be the defaults. You're comforting. Uh, it's comforting. I'm tired of default fonts. I think. Everybody